uh, uh, on behalf of my friend Senator Schatz and I, I'm glad to convene the first hearing of the Subcommittee on Communications, Technology, Innovation, and the Internet for the 115th Congress. So welcome to you all. As we all know, in today's connected world, the demand for spectrum increases with every new technology. Spectrum is the lifeblood of this connectivity, improving the lives of people around the globe. Our discussion of spectrum policy today comes on the heels of this committee's approval of the Mobile Now Act. Under Chairman Thune's leadership, we have taken a significant bipartisan step toward freeing up spectrum for the next generation. And people should silence their devices, uh, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but uh, right on key, thank you, Senator. Um, for the next generation of wireless services, with the approval of this legislation, I hope to see Senate uh, passage of the bill in the near future. Our discussion of spectrum policy should continue with rapid growth in the use of mobile devices and the Internet of Things. Demand for spectrum will only increase. Spectrum for mobile broadband is giving rural America the tools and resources it needs. Applications that utilize mobile broadband provide the means to deliver quality health care in the most remote corners of our states and transmit real-time data for improved crop production on our farms. Satellite services are providing television, broadband, and earth observation for a variety of applications. Next-gen TV has the potential to deliver better emergency services and ultimately save lives. This is particularly important to states like Mississippi that can be situated in the paths of hurricanes, tornadoes, and other natural disasters. Unlicensed spectrum offers opportunities for businesses of all sizes to innovate and continue to fuel the vast expansion of the Internet of Things. Although innovation demands more efficient spectrum use, innovation will also be what solves the problem of limited spectrum. We're here today to talk about the value of spectrum to the economy. We are here to talk about what we have learned from the FCC's recent spectrum auctions and how unlicensed spectrum is a vital piece to the puzzle. I also hope our discussion will encourage a focus on the future of spectrum policy and set the stage for this committee to look at ways to address spectrum demand. I would like to welcome all of our witnesses, uh, and I will introduce them in a moment after we have turned for an opening statement to our colleague, Mr. Schatz. So what you're saying is, I've got a device on, on my nightstand, and, and suddenly there's a tornado. So what happens? So we could alert your phone. So it, it turns my phone on. Okay. If it has power, okay. it would turn your phone on. And it would, there would be an alert that would come up and say, you are in the path of, uh, of a storm or you're in, the, you know, you're in imminent danger, take cover immediately. In fact, you know, the tornadoes that went through Hattiesburg back on the 21st of January, if we'd have had that technology, you know, I believe we could have, I believe we could have saved some lives. So nobody has that technology now? That, t that technology is, uh, we can alert, but to be, we, we, this technology allows us to, to target much more effectively. So as an example, today's alerts sometimes conform to county uh, lines. And as a tornado moves through geography, it doesn't conform to county lines. So you could alert just those consumers in the path of the storm, the polygon in front of the storm, as opposed to Montgomery County and Prince George's County. Um, it's a much more targeted alert that would be more effective. Yeah, thank you, Senator Schatz, for letting me interject there. 